Hey everyone, it's Graham here from TheRecordingRevolution.com. Let's talk about drums today, how to take drums that were recorded in a small room and make them sound like they were recorded in a massive room. Real quick, why would you want to do that? Because massive sounding drums are recorded in massive rooms. That's how you get that sound. That's probably one of still the best reasons why going to a big studio is a viable option for some people because you just really can't recreate that sound in a small space. That's part of what you're recording. So room mics in a massive live room that's got a lot of high energy. Um, drums just, they create an incredibly monstrous sound, especially when you compress those room mics and blend them in with the closed mics. Now, for me and most of you, we're recording in small rooms. I re my studio is mostly a mixing studio, um, so putting a drum kit in here, if I'm recording here, it's gonna sound small. And that's okay for a, lot of, for a lot of sounds. On my recent record for my personal music, a couple of the songs just wanted them to sound small and, and the tr track sounded fine. But a couple of them, I really wanted them to have that big uh, rock sound as if they were recorded in a big room, and they weren't. But the drums themselves sounded great, so what I needed to do was trick my ear to make them sound like they were in a big, big room. And it's really easy to do. You'll need a couple of samples, not to change out your drum sounds, but to basically sample reverb. You're basically sampling the sound of the room and blending that in with your actual drum sounds. It's really easy to do. I'll show you how to do it if you have any sampling software, Easy Drummer, Trigger from Slate, any of those. And these are really affordable programs. It's a cheap way, you know, 99 bucks to turn your drums into a massive sounding drum track. So here are my drums um, mixed and recorded. Um, and there's no reverb. This is just what they sound like. Close mics, kick, snare, toms, and overheads. They already sound great to me. I was very pleased with the raw recording and a little bit of EQ and compression brought out a lot of smack. But they don't sound huge uh, because they aren't huge and they weren't recorded in a huge room. So what I've done is taken just the kick and the snare tracks and I basically made a copy of those tracks. In Pro Tools you can do this simply by right clicking on the track and choosing Duplicate and that'll let you literally create a copy of the track with the audio right next to it. So I'm not actually gonna process the actual kick or the actual snare, I'm gonna create a copy of that track. And I went ahead and did that already. Pull them up here. And so I created a track called Kick Room and a track called Snare Room. Originally these were mono tracks because that's what the kick and the snare are. But what I did is instantiate Slate's trigger plugin, this is trigger two, uh, on the track, okay? And I'm using, again, if you don't have trigger, but you have something else or you're doing this manually, the idea is I want to 100% replace this sound on a separate track, okay? So the mix knob is 100%. And I found a couple of samples, a room, room A and room B, a couple different mics that I liked. Let's take a listen to what um, just the kick room sounds like. Right, that's my actual kick drum sound, which is now a copy of the, cause the real kick drums over here on the left, compressed and EQ'd. Over here on the right, I don't have any of the processing, but just the raw kick drum. So I'm gonna 100% replace that with the room sound over here. So you obviously get no bleed, and it's a stereo track, and it's not the nice punchy close kick drum mic. This is literally a room mic sample. So when they sampled this kick drum, this is just the room mic of it, okay? Because I already have a good sounding kick drum track. I want just the room. So that's 100%. And doing the same thing with a snare. All right, here's my actual snare if I pull the mix down. Mix. Nothing earth shattering, but that's just literally the sound of the snare in stereo with the ring. Now, what I've done is put an 1176 to just compress 12 to one ratio, a lot of that room sound. So here are the two room sounds together.
Again, nothing to write home about. So now all we've done is creating a new kick drum track and a new snare drum track, completely replaced those sounds with samples of a room mic for a kick and a room mic of a snare. We've compressed them a bit to get the level up, to get the energy up a little bit. And all these have created is, in effect, a reverb, uh, a sense of depth, a sense of space. You're not going to have the punch or the impact of the actual drum mics. But listen to what they do to the actual sound. Nice, right? You get the stereo separation, the width, because now you feel like, oh, the drums are in a bigger, wider room, and you get that energy and that high-level energy. Because watch what happens when I take away these room mics now. That's what we started with, right? A good, punchy drum sound but you don't have that space. You notice it mostly when it's gone. So again, we haven't changed the drum sound. We haven't replaced any of these drums with samples. We haven't done anything to the actual drum sound. We've just basically created a reverb that's more authentic because it actually is a drum in a room with room mics. And that's all I wanted was the kick and the snare to give them some depth. So we'll go before and after, and again, you can hear the difference. There it is, guys. It's that simple to basically take a good drum sound, if it's mic'd up well, recorded well, EQ'd well, in a small teeny bedroom. Again, my space is maybe 15 by 15. It's a really small room, and I can barely fit a drum kit in here next to my mixing desk and my sofa. So record it with carpet. Again, nothing live about this room at all. And then you can simply take some samples, get the stock stuff that comes with trigger, something like that. I think I paid $99 for Trigger, the EX version, not even the Platinum version, and just pull a couple of room sounds that you like, duplicate the track. Don't do this actually on the kick and the snare. Go ahead and create a separate kick and a separate snare track where you've copied the actual kicks and snare so it can trigger those room sounds. And that way, you can compress them and EQ them and ride them on a different fader separate to the real kick and the snare. And in essence, that's what you're doing. You now have a couple of room mics that you can blend in with your actual drum sound. Hope that helps. Again, this is Graham at therecordingrevolution.com. Go make some great music with the gear you already have, people. See you on another video soon. Take care.